What's going on guys, Jerry Neutron here, back with a brand new video, and check out what I just got in the mail from Antlion. This is the Mod Mic 5. They just released this and I was able to get my hands on one, so now I finally get to test out the infamous Mod Mic. Now if you guys aren't familiar with this product, which you probably are by now, uh, basically it's a boom mic that you can attach to any pair of headphones you own and that essentially allows you to use them as a headset now some of you may be wondering why not just use a pre-made headset like the cloud twos a 40s or something like that uh, well most headsets are usually lacking in some area whether it be audio quality mic quality or both and the idea behind this is to pair a microphone with a set of headphones that you know sound good which should ultimately lead to a better experience my choice of headphones for today are the Biodynamic DT990 Pros, but of course you can use whichever ones you want. But first things first, let's take a look at what you get with the mod mic. It comes with this antline carrying case, which on the inside contains a few different accessories, including a 2 meter cable and a 1 meter cable, both with 3.5 millimeter jacks. The shorter one is for you console folks, that'll be connecting your mic to a controller. You also get an inline mute switch, cable clips for cable management, extra 3M adhesives, two meters of cable wrap to keep your cables in check, and then the mod mic itself. They also sent me a couple other accessories that are sold separately. Uh, this Y adapter for connecting your headphones and mod mic to any controller with a 3.5 millimeter input, and this USB adapter, which acts as a small sound card. You'll want this if you're using a Mac or if you have terrible onboard audio and want to eliminate or reduce any background hiss. Now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and install this thing on my DT990s. The base clasp was already attached to the unit, so all I did was line the mic up in an area that would allow it to reach the corner of my mouth, and then held it down for 30 seconds. And no, I didn't have any problems with it being attached in this vented area, if you're wondering. Also, the mod mic attaches to the base via a magnet, so if you wanted to, for whatever reason, uh, you could remove the mic temporarily. Now from here, it's just a matter of managing your cables with the cable clips, and then at this point, what you would do is route your cables through the uh, cable wrap that I mentioned earlier. This will basically make it seem like you have just one one thick cable coming from your headphones rather than two separate ones, which I actually think is a nice touch. Unfortunately, my headphones have a coiled cable and not a straight one, so I really won't be able to use that. Now previously, uh, Antline had two separate products for the Mod Mic 4, one with an omnidirectional mic and one with a unidirectional mic. This time around, they've consolidated the two products and now the Mod Mic 5 includes dual mic capsules along with a switch to go between the two pickup patterns. If you're not sure which one to use, uh, it basically goes like this. The unidirectional mic is better at canceling out the background noises, whereas the omnidirectional mic is more sensitive and better sounding, but will pick up noise from all around. So you have the option of choosing which mode to use based on your environment. So with all that said, let's get to the part that actually matters at the end of the day, the mic test. All right guys, so here's a little sample of the Mod Mic 5 using the omnidirectional microphone. Right now I have this connected to my laptop with the uh, USB adapter that was provided. Um, so this will give you an idea of what the audio quality is like. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of typing so that you guys can hear um, kind of how much it picks up on background noise. So if I do a little bit of typing here with my mechanical keyboard, which is using blue switches, this should give you an idea of what the uh, pickup is like there. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump over to the unidirectional mic so you guys can hear how that one sounds. All right, guys, so now I've switched over to the unidirectional microphone. Again, this is plugged into my laptop with the USB adapter. You should notice a slight difference uh, in my voice using this microphone. Also, in terms of picking up background noise, it'll pick up a lot less than the omnidirectional microphone. So if I do a little bit of typing here, again, with my mechanical keyboard, which uses uh, blue switches, you should notice that it doesn't pick up as much noise. So um, if you're using this microphone in a noisy environment, using the uh, unidirectional one will probably be the uh, best choice for you. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about the uh, two different microphones and which, ones, uh, which one sounds the best to you down in the comments below. 
Oh, and one last thing I wasn't going to do, but I decided to go ahead and throw my HyperX Cloud Revolver headset into the mix just to give you guys an idea of what something like a, a typical headset like this sounds like in comparison to the ModMic 5. So this is still connected to my laptop, still using the provided USB adapter. The only difference is the microphone. So you guys let me know which one you think sounds better down in the comments below. Okay, so with the mic test complete, I can finally give you guys my thoughts on the new Mod Mic 5. Uh, well, for one, the mic quality is definitely a step up from a typical headset. Even in the unidirectional mode, it sounds much more full and less nasally than most headsets. And in the omnidirectional mode, there really is no comparison. Now with that said, I did have to go through some things to get my mic quality up to par. First thing I had to do is use the USB adapter, AKA sound card or DAC that was sent. Uh, without it, I got a crazy amount of hiss just plugging it into my onboard audio, so I'd highly recommend purchasing that for most people. Also on top of that, I was getting some feedback in my mic like a hum or buzz, which turned out to be caused by my surge protector, and turning that off seemed to fix the issue, but checking it down was kind of frustrating. Uh, apparently I have some type of power issue here, or dirty power issue, here in the office, and the mic was able to pick up on it. It's not the mod mic's fault, but I figure I would mention it just in case someone else has a similar experience. Aside from that, there's not much else to say. It was an easy install, cable management was fine, although I wish I could have used the cable wrap. They probably should include another size though, in addition to the 2 meter one, that way you don't have to cut it to size if you're using the uh, mod mic on console. And as far as pricing goes, it is expensive compared to previous generations, but you have to decide how important the modularity is to you. If you know exactly what you want, then the mod mic 4 is still a good purchase. Otherwise, if you want options, I'd suggest saving a little bit more for the mod mic 5. So that's about it guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoy this type of content. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Jerry Neutron. And until next time, see ya.